Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well. It is my pleasure to talk with my colleagues from the same field. My name is Marwan Madi. I am a researcher and inspector of underwater archaeology in Central Department for Underwater Antiquities, Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, Egypt. And I obtained an MA degree in maritime archaeology titled by an analytical study of fastening methods in ancient Egyptian shipbuilding from the early dynastic period until the end of late period. From Alexandria Center for Maritime Archaeology and Underwater Culture Heritage, Alexandria University. Today, I will talk about did ancient Egyptian shipbuilders use dovetail, mortise and tenon technique to fasten their ships? Throughout the pharaonic periods, ancient Egyptian shipbuilding witnessed various fastening methods in ships during their evolution. One of these fasteners is called dovetail mortise and tenons. Sometimes it called dovetail key or butterfly cram. So, what is the dovetail mortise and the tenon? It used to fasten between every two planks on the inner face at seams to provide transverse strengthening. It composed from two parts which are dovetail mortise and the, and the dovetail tenon. First, the dovetail tenon is a solid wooden piece. It takes two triangle in shape meeting from their tops and it placed on the cavity of the other part which is dovetail mortise that it takes the same shape on the inner face of the planks. To date, the dovetail technique has been shown in the Middle Kingdom ships despite builders and carpenters commonly using dovetail tenons to secure seams in ancient Egypt, as early as the 4th dynasty in furniture, boxes, coffins, sledges, and between some blocks from the new and later kingdoms. But what about chips? Is this method used in boats or not? Unfortunately, to date, we have only examples from the Middle Kingdom, which are Dahshu boats and the blank segment from Wadi Gawasi's harbour site. About Dahshu boats, De Morgan discovered five boats on the southeast of the south wall of the funeral complex at the pyramid of Zinuzert the third. At the shore. Four boats have been discovered and studied. Two of them was displayed in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Now they moved to Sharm el Sheikh Museum. The third boat in Chicago Museum and the fourth in Carnegie Museum in the USA. A fifth hall might remain buried or missed at Dashur. Dashur boats are nihilotic craft designed for efficient travel on relatively calm and predictable interior waters. Dated to 1850 BC. There is a similarity in the general shape and between the length of the four boats with might a little difference. The type of wood is cedar and they have common fastening metho methods such as deep mortise and the tenons, lashing methods in bows and the sterns, dovetail mortise and the tenon connected the blanks from the inner face. The antiquity of the dovetail joints has long been called into question. Some scholars thought that dovetail tenons are not original and the modern modifications 
after the boats were excavated and some others thought that the original method of evolution in shipbuilding from the Middle Kingdom. De Morgan, who discovered the ships, did not mention dovetails or lashing in his reports and his specific inclusion of the mortise and the tenon joinery that was concealed between the hull planks. While Reiner said the, the most dovetails are modern in these ports, depending on the differences in the number of dovetails between the four ports. Ward argued that dovetails mortises in originality fastened with a ligature and replacement by dovetail tenons in the reconstruction of the ship in the last century. And she studied them in Carnegie Port and she found the edges of dovetail mortise are smooth that may be caused by lecture in his theory. Abdel Megid noted that Du Morgan, who discovered the boat, did not mention dovetails in his publication, despite he pointed out the presence of mortise and tenon joints. As well as Abdel Megid noted that the use of, dov of a dovetail should be just between the first strike and the central strike due to the hydrodynamic of the port. It breaks the dovetails in the rest of the strikes if we apply them on all strikes. Cressman argued that it was original fastened, whereas dovetail tenons filled their dovetail mortises and they lead to the same Egyptian measurements, digit and palm. The dovetail tenons around 2 pounds in length three digits at the widest point and two digits in the narrow midpoints. And the Cairo pots have jagged edges resulting from ancient chisels and there is, there is no evidence for smooth edges caused by lashing straps. Besides, no proof of ropes or animal skin like what word are found in Carnegie Port and he compared between the dovetail in the plank that found in Wadi Gawasis that I will talk about it later he saw that it takes the opposite position in each side of the, of the board like in Dahshur and later he said even if Dahshur Port did not use dovetail tenon or lecture it will be enough for the boat used in calm water with this size connected by deep mortise and tenons and bound the bow and sterns by ropes and the beams locked in positions. The hull, when swelled by water logging, would have functioned as a single consolidated unit without the addition of interior fasteners. The other evidence of using dovetail mortise and tenon in shipbuilding from Marsa Wadi Gawasis that located 23 km to the th south of Safaga on the Red Sea coast from the eastern desert side. It dated to the Middle Kingdom. The harbor consists of seven caves built for operations of state expeditions staged from Coptus to Pont for around 500 years. It contains remains of ship's timbers, some of them damaged in parts due to ship worm. Archaeologists identified these timbers are parts of seagoing ships. The impressive board T-64 it is an important discovery. It is a segment of plank. Archaeologists described it as a part of hull planks that belong belonged to the first strike that fastened to the keel. It measures 106 cm long, 
50.5 cm wide and 22.5 cm thick. The type of wood is cedar. It's, it has considerable, considerable details of fastening methods such as deep mortise and tenon joints like in the shore. Look the deep mortise and the tenon joints, a lecture for cooper straps and dovetail mortises. So, if we look at the end of T64, we will find the two opposite dovetail mortise similar to the shore pots, and that is what Kressman makes his theory to confirm the using of dovetail tenon in the shore and not ligature. Beside another discovery on Wadi Gaussis, around 15 halves of do dovetail tenons that correspond in size with dovetail mortise on T64. As word compared the beam in the Ashur boat and the beams in Wadi Gaussis, and she found the similarity between each other in the square holes at each end of beams and she found those in Wadi Gawasis beams are bigger than beams of from the Shur boats in size due to Wadi Gawasis beams are belonged to large ships. I compared between the dimensions of T64 segment from its positions in the ship in the first track at the forward or aft of the ship as archaeologists identified it. It takes 50.5 wide and 22.5 cm thick compared with the same part of the shore boat which is 29 cm wide and 9.5 cm thick. So the shore plank is about half the size of T64. The dimension of the half dovetail mortise in T64 is 14.5 cm long, 3.4 cm wide at the narrow midpoints, 6.5 cm wide at the widest point, and 3.8 cm deep. Compared with the dimensions of the half dovetail mortise in the shore, which is 7.5 cm long, 1.5 to 2 cm wide at the narrow midpoints. 4 cm wide at the widest point and 2 cm deep. Finally, the half dovetail tenon which corresponds with T64 is, is 15 cm long, 3 to 3.5 cm at the narrow midpoints, 6.5 to 7 cm in the widest point, and 3.5 cm thick compared with the half dovetail tenon in the shore which is 7.5 cm long, 2.4 cm wide at the narrow midpoints, 5.2 cm wide in the widest point and 2 cm thick. From this comparison we can conclude that dovetail mortise and the tenons are used not only between the keel and the first track, but it used between other tracks also. According to the, posi the, the position of T64 in the first track, with, with two opposite dovetails appear on its inner face, one fastened between this board with the keel, and the other side fastened this, this board with the second track similar to the shore ports. From the comparison of the previous dimensions of T64 compared to the, the shore port, we can conclude that maybe T64 is a part of a ship bigger than the, the shore port twice. In addition to Kresman's observation about the similarity in the opposite dovetails dof in T64 and the shore ports I will add another observation that is only two opposite dovetails at 
the end of T64 along the segment that measures 106 cm with any existence of the other dovetails in the same segment. So at least the distance between those dovetails and the other dovetail in the rest of the missed part of the plank would be 106 cm or more. If we compare this distance with the distance between dovetails in the shore pots, which are measured from 50 to 100 centimeter, that may be indicating the desire of shipbuilders to set dovetails in large distance between each other to secure the hull from the inner face as additional fasteners to provide transfers strengthening that already secured in both the shore and the T64 by deep mortise and the tenon joints from internal edges. So from this, this comparison and the existence of T64 and its dovetails tenons, it may be confirmed the possibility of using dovetail tenons on the shore ports are original instead of lashing methods and they are not modern modification in the last century after the excavation. In the end, the discussion and research on this point is still not over yet and maybe if we find and study the missing fifth boat provided it remains at the shore or has otherwise uh, avoided modern modifications it will answer this point. I would like to thank the Nautical Archaeology Society and the International Journal of Nautical Archaeology and the organizers of the conference. Thank you.